boys and girls. Welcome to class at your home from my home. I'm so excited to be meeting with you again today. Again, my name is Mrs. Naughton, and I'm an HISD teacher at River Oaks Elementary. I'm so excited to be meeting with you. Last time we met, we talked about characters and setting. And I hope you had an opportunity to read a just right book and find the many characters and settings in your story. Remember, we discussed that characters are people, animals, or creatures in a story. We also talked about the setting, and we remember that the setting is where and when a story takes place. Can you tell me about the books that you read and the characters and settings that you found? Oh my goodness, I read that book too. We read Keisha Ann Can, and her setting was school. That is so cool. I hope that you read many more books, but Keisha Ann Can in that story is a kindergartner student, and she is attending school for the very first day. And so her adventure took us through the classroom, recess, cafeteria, and the playground. So I, I hope that when you read your stories, you were able to identify those different characters and the places that they went. And by now, you are probably very familiar with identifying those characters and settings. Today, we're going to specifically talk about characters only. Of course, they still go on some great and amazing adventures in the stories that we read, but today we're gonna talk about the characters and their feelings. We're gonna talk about their traits as well. Character traits are feelings, or things that they do, or the things that they look like. And we describe characters by the things that they do and the things that they look, and how they look. So those traits today that we're gonna be identifying are going to be called internal traits. And that is a little bit of a big word. So we're going to discuss what internal traits are. We're also going to be talking about external traits. So we have two big words here, external and internal character traits. So today, after we discuss what they are, we're gonna be able to identify those in characters that we read about. But first, let's look at external and internal character traits and what that even means. Here I have made a simple chart to identify what external and internal means. So let's start with external. External, I think about the outside, what we can see. The illustrator has done a really good job in most of the stories that we read to show us the character traits and what we see. So those things are like your hair, your clothes, the actions, the facial expressions, and the heights of the characters. We can easily see those through the pictures. Just like I can describe my external traits. I have long black hair. I am wearing a blue shirt. I am sitting so my height is pretty short. And I can make facial expressions that will show how I feel. 
We notice that when we read through the illustrations or the pictures in the book. And that's when the author and the illustrator work really great together. Sometimes the illustrator is also the author. So we figure out character traits by looking on the outside, what those characters look like, what we see when we read the story. What's a little bit more difficult, boys and girls, is the internal traits. The internal traits are what we learn by reading the story. So we learn the character's thoughts. We learn the character's feelings. And we learn what the characters say in the story. The author uses words to help us find the internal traits of a character. So for instance, in some of the stories that we read, you might see think bubbles, or you might see um, the words that describe how the character feels. Those boys and girls, we learn by reading. So there are two kinds of traits that we can identify while reading our book. External, what we see with our eyes, and internal, what we learn by reading the story. So let's take a moment to think about some examples of external and internal traits before we even start our book. So I'm not going to read this story, but we're going to look at some of the illustrations in this story to help figure out the external and internal traits. So in this book, the pigeon has to go to school. The pigeon has very distinct characteristics or very distinct traits is what we're calling them. We know what the pigeon looks like. We know that it is a pigeon. It is a bird. Externally, I see that it has wings, it has legs, it has eyes and a beak, and I know that it's a bird. Those are external character traits. I also see the expression that the pigeon has. There's some expression here. How do you think the pigeon feels or looks just by seeing the picture? Yeah, upset, disappointed. I don't even read the words. And I can see that through the external traits. Here, I see that the pigeon looks a certain way. You're right, kind of confused. They have the little squiggle line up top on his head and that might show that it's confusion. Again, externally, how do you think the pigeon's feeling? frustrated, annoyed. So I want you to be thinking about that as we read. Externally, we can see the pictures, but internally, we gotta read the words. And so that's not the book I've chosen for us to read. Today, I've chosen us to read a story about a country mouse and a city mouse. And externally, we know that they are mice. And there are some difference about the things that they wear as well. But we're also going to look at some of those internal traits. And there we have to read the words. So as we're reading today, I want you to notice some of the external traits, and we're gonna be writing them down, and some of the internal traits. We have to use the text evidence to help us with both of those traits in our book today. Here is our story. 
The Tale of Johnny Town Mouse by Be uh, Beatrix Potter. So in this story, we have a town mouse and we have a country mouse. This is also the author of the tale of Peter Rabbit, if you're familiar with the character of Peter Rabbit, who is obviously a rabbit. This character in the story is a mouse. Last time we met, we talked about we can main characters in the story. And usually we can identify main characters by who is often mentioned in the story. I also have a tip. If the main character is mentioned in the title of the story, they're probably going to mention, be mentioned throughout the story as well. That's how I can quickly identify a main character. Here we have Johnny Town Mouse. Let's read about Johnny Town Mouse and let's see if we can figure out some of the internal and external traits of Johnny Town, uh, Town Mouse. Johnny Town Mouse was born in a cupboard. Timmy Willie was born in a garden. Timmy Willie was a little country mouse who went to town by mistake in a hamper. The gardener set vegetables, sent vegetables to town once a week by a carrier. He packed them in a big hamper. So we have two mice, Johnny Town Mouse and Timmy Will Willie. Timmy was born in a garden, okay? And he is a free roaming mouse. He spots this hamper and we notice a hamper using text evidence looks like this little wicker crate and he sees that and the vegetables are inside let's keep reading the gardener left the hamper by the garden gate so that the carrier could pick it up when he passed timmy willie crept into the hole of the wicker work, and after eating some peas, Timmy Willie fell fast asleep. Okay, well, externally, I know that Timmy Willie is a mouse who lives in the field, a field mouse or a, a country mouse, okay? Things that I think about Timmy Willie, I think He's quite curious. He sees something and he wants to be a part of it. And being curious sometimes can get you in a little bit of a trouble. I have the text evidence to note that he's curious because he goes into the hole of the wicker work and he falls asleep. So he's curious about what's inside and he falls asleep inside of the carrier. Those are what I think, and that's the text evidence that I have to support it. So I'm going to write those things down as I identify them right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to write down our character, and then we're going to write down everything that I just discussed with you about the character's internal and external traits. Let's do that together. Here is the chart that we're going to be using. Our character that we're looking at right now is Timmy Willie. I'm gonna put in parentheses that he is the country mouse. He's the field mouse that I think is curious. In my chart, it says, think aloud. What do I think I know about the character? I think Timmy is curious. Okay, I need the text evidence to support that he is curious. And in my story, Timmy Willie spots the, the basket and climbs into the hole. 
So my text evidence to support that he is curious is that he sees a basket and sneaks inside of it. That also tells me he's a little sneaky as well. So my internal trait, I'm going to write that he is curious and a little sneaky. My text evidence I have is that he's going into the hole, he's eating the food, and then he fell asleep. That's another clue that tells me that he's a bit sneaky, is now he's eating the food. When you are a mouse who lives in a garden free roaming, you're not a pet. And so you have to find the food all on your own. And Timmy Willie knows that, and he's he is finding food wherever he can. Well, let's keep reading and see what Timmy Willie gets into as he's inside of this basket. He woke, awoke in fright while the hamper was being lifted into the carrier's cart. Then there was a jolting and a clattering of horses' feet. Other packages were thrown in for miles and miles. Jolt, jolt, jolt. And Timmy Willie trembled amongst the jumbled up vegetables. Oh, I'm noticing that word trembled that the author used. That, boys and girls, is text evidence. Trembled, even though we can't see him doing it, I know that that means that he's shaking. That might mean that internally he's feeling some fear. So fear, boys and girls, is a trait that Timmy Willie might be feeling because he is trembling. Why do you think that he might be trembling or fearful? You're right, because he doesn't know where he is. Could you imagine being in a carrier or a cart and being tousled and jostled around and he doesn't know where he is? He's been lifted and taken elsewhere. And so he might be feeling terrified, scared, or fearful. Let's go ahead and add that to our chart, boys and girls. So I think Timmy is scared or fearful. The text evidence I have is that Timmy trembled. Trembled, boys and girls, means that he's shaking. Trembling is usually a sign of fear. When you're scared of something and you don't want to do it, you might tremble or shake. So my text evidence that I think that he's scared is he trembled. So an internal trait can be fearful or scared or what, I, what do you think? Yeah, worried. These all boys and girls, boys and girls are called synonyms. They kind of are words that mean the same thing and he feels a certain way. So we're gonna continue to reading and I wanna kind of take a step back from those internal and external character traits right now and just find out what's happening in the story because as a strong reader, we also have to identify what's happening in the story. We don't wanna get lost. So we've only read a couple of pages, but so far, Timmy Willie has gone into a basket. He's being carried into town. And we know that because it said that the vegetables were being taken to town. He's gotten into the um, 
into the carriage and he is jostled and jumbled and thrown around. Now he's going to be in town. So we're gonna to read to find out what's going on and where he ends up. So let's just read the story because boys and girls, we don't wanna get lost in our story, even though we are trying to identify character traits. So let's go back to our story. At last, the cart stopped at a house where the hamper was taken out, carried in, and set down. The cook gave the carrier six pence. The back door banged and the cart rumbled away, but there was no quiet. There seemed to be hundreds of cars passing. Dogs barked, boys whistled in the street. The cook laughed, the parlor maid ran up and downstairs and the canary sang like a steam engine. The author has really set up a great setting for us. We hear all the bustling noises. It's loud, it's clangy, it's um, not familiar to Timmy Willie. He lives in the country, remember? And in the country, it's very calm and quiet. He's definitely not in the country anymore. Timmy Willie, who had lived all his life in the garden, was almost frightened to death. Precisely, the cook opened up the hammer, hamper and began to unpack the vegetables. Out sprang the terrified Timmy Willie. Oh my goodness, boys and girls, we were right. Timmy Willie is terrified. The author says it right here. That is our text evidence or our text support to tell us that our thoughts were correct. Timmy Willie was terrified. Great job, boys and girls. You're already identifying those character traits, external and internal, correctly. Up jump, jumped the cook on a chair, exclaiming, a mouse, a mouse, call the cat, fetch me the poker, Sarah. Timmy Willie did not wait for Sarah with the poker. He rushed along the skirting board till he came to a little hole and in he popped. So he's very frightened and he's just scurried away just in time. Let's find out where he goes. He dropped half a foot and crashed into the middle of a mouse dinner party, breaking three glasses. Who in the world is this? inquired Johnny Town Mouse. But after the first exclamation of surprise, he instantly recovered his manners. With the utmost politeness, he introduced Timmy Willie to the nine other mice, all with long tails and white neckties. Timmy Willie's own tail was insignificant. Johnny Town Mice and his friends noticed it, but they were well, they were too well bred to make personal remarks. Only one of them asked, Timmy Willie, if he had been in a trap. So I'm noticing some very distinguished external traits here. I'm noticing the differences between what they are wearing and what they look like. What do you see with the town mouse and the country mouse? You're right. Externally, Timmy Willie is not wearing proper clothing. He's a mouse for all sakes, but the town mouse, they're wearing neckties, looks like a suit. They're very distinguished 
and proper, even in the text evidence, it says that they were all just too proper to ask questions. And he just politely introduced them to each other. So we already are seeing some external traits, but I want you to be thinking about those internal traits. We have Johnny Town Mouse now, and out of nowhere, Timmy Willie falls in to their, to their dinner party, and he is just a mess. But Johnny Town Mouse pulls together his manners, and he properly introduces Timmy Willie. So for Johnny Town Mouse, I'm starting to think he has some internal traits. Let's add him to our chart. So I started a new chart here with Johnny Town Mouse. We have Timmy Willie, the country mouse, and here we have Johnny Town Mouse. What I think about Johnny Town Mouse is he's a little bit more proper. He's polite and he is a lot more refined than the country mouse. The text evidence I have is that he politely introduced Timmy Willie. He also properly it is properly dressed. So for an internal trait for Johnny Town Mouse, I'm going to say that he's polite and what I thought proper. And proper boys and girls means that you're just very well-mannered. You have good manners and you're respectful. So he's polite and proper. I'm going to even add kind and not, um, kind and well-mannered. And when I say well-mannered, I mean that he's on his best behavior. He's very calm. So he doesn't get all in a flurry. He doesn't get um, con get confused or chaos. He's just very proper. So we're learning just the, the differences. First, externally, what they look like, and internally, how they act. Let's just finish up this first few page, and then you are going to try this all on your own. So let's go ahead and take a look one last time at our book. The dinner was eight courses, not much of anything, but truly elegant. All the dishes were unknown to Timmy Willie, who would have been a little afraid of tasting them, only he was very hungry and very anxious to behave with company manners. The continual noise upstairs made him nervous, and he dropped a plate. Never mind, they don't belong to us, said Johnny. So boys and girls, that paragraph had a lot of information, a lot of text evidence, and a lot of internal traits going on. I'm gonna have you read that paragraph on your own as we close out. And you are going to write down some of those internal and external traits that you notice in that paragraph. And then boys and girls, today and every day on your own, I want to see if you can identify character traits, external, what they look like, and internal, how they act. So boys and girls, as you're reading today your Just Right book, I really want you to help I, to try to identify those character traits. When we identify character traits, we learn more about the characters in the story. We can get a little bit more invested in the story and find out more about who they are. So I'm going to leave you with that last paragraph, and I want you to see if you can fill out the chart all on your own. 
then as you read this week, I want you to try it with your very own book, whatever you choose for your just right book. I can't wait to see you again next time, and I hope that you have a great time reading. Happy reading, boys and girls.